All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to run Lion on a Core Duo or Core Solo Mac. Now, for those of you who don't know, Lion officially requires a Core 2 Duo processor. Now, the Core Duo is a dual core processor, obviously, but it is 32 bit only and does not support loading 64 bit applications or kernel extensions. The Core 2 Duo, however, is a 64 bit capable processor and is natively supported in Lion. Now this is a 2006 Core Duo MacBook Pro. It's the 2.16 GHz glossy model, as you can see. And this is what I'm going to be demonstrating Lion running on. Now before I start with the demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little tutorial on how to actually make the uh, drive bootable on one of these machines. So for that part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and switch to a screen recording to make it a little bit easier. And also, please keep note that to do this, you will need another functional Mac. I don't think it has to be, or I'm pretty sure it has to be a, a Lion-capable machine. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and switch to my uh, custom-built Hackintosh over here. And we will continue with the tutorial. So be right back. Alright, so I'm now on my custom built PC and I'll go ahead and proceed with the rest of the tutorial. So you can either use one of two things to install um, your copy of macOS 10.7.2 on. You can use either an external drive like I'm using, or you can put your target Core Duo or Core Solo Mac into target disk mode and connect it via Firewire and install it that way. So once you get a uh, uh, source to install to connected to your computer you're going to want to go into disk utility you're going to want to find the drive in this case it's a 30 gigabyte Fujitsu drive go to the partition tab go to one partition select options ensure it's uh, that GUID partition table is selected press OK Change this to Mac OS Extended Journal and click Apply and Partition. Now I'm not going to do that now because I already have a working 10.7.2 install on this drive. So, yeah. Um, also, if you do not have a copy of 10.7.2 and if you have a copy that is newer than 10.7.2, you can go ahead and download iAtcos L2, which is actually a Hackintosh distro to install to your um, external drive or your target disk mode Mac. So if you don't want to follow the tutorial to modify your own copy of OS X, I'll provide a link to a pre-modified copy that I've already set up and modified and everything um, as for a download in the link as a link in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and download that if you don't want to follow this tutorial. But I will um, say that it, it will be quite a slow download as my server is not that fast. So once you get that ready, you can go ahead and mount the iatcos L2 image. As you can see, I've already done that. And as you can see, there is actually nothing in the image that you can see. So to get into the folder we need to go into, go to Go in the Finder menu up here. Click Go to Folder. Um, you can go ahead and drag the uh, mounted image onto the go to folder window there. Type slash and type system. And you will now see the uh, go to installation, packages, and locate os install.mpkg. Go ahead and open it. Click continue. Just go through this standard installer. And when you get to this part, select Change Install Location. Go down to your Lion or Target Drive that you want to install Lion to. Click Continue, Customize, and deselect all these options. Now these are of course for Hackintoshing, and since we're going to be installing this on a real Mac, we don't need any of these options. So then you just go ahead and click Install, type your password, and it would install as normal. Now, of course, I'm not going to do that because I have already installed it. Um, and once it finishes, you will have a fully bootable copy of OS X. 
for a supported Mac. Now I'll show you how to modify it to boot on a Core Duo or Core Solo Mac. So let me just go ahead and close everything. Now I will provide a link to this um, zip file in the description of this video, but I've put together a little package here of all the files you will need to modify OS X to boot on a Core Duo or Core Solo Mac. So once you've gotten the uh, target drive all set up and installed with OS 10.7.2, go ahead and open it. Now as you can see we have the drive here and it is a stock install. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this. We don't need it yet. Now what you're going to want to do is open up terminal. So I'll do that. Now type sudo ch flags no hidden and go ahead and drag on the partition that you intend or that you've installed OS 10 to and type Mac or Mach, I don't know how to pronounce it, underscore kernel. Type your password and you will now see the mock kernel file in your um, Lion drive. So what we're going to want to do is rename this file to mock kernel back, like that, just to back it up. You can delete it if you want, but I recommend backing it up just in case. Um, now what you're going to want to do is go into your or the uh, package and drag on the mock kernel file provided. Just right into the root, just like so. Now you're going to want to go to system, library, Look for core services and look for sys or supported or platform support.plist. As you can see, it is right here. And we're just going to go ahead and delete it. Go ahead and empty trash. Now, still in the core services directory, or actually, you want to go run directory back, go ahead and drag on these two files the finder file right here, the finder app. This is actually a old version of finder. It is the last 32-bit supported finder um, released with Lion. It's actually It was actually released with Lion Developer Preview 2. However, it works just fine in the final versions of Lion. Go ahead and drag that onto the core services folder. Select replace. And lastly, what we're going to want to do is drag on boot.efi to the core services folder. Select replace once again. And we are now done with the core services folder. Now get your eye on the extensions folder. Now as you can see here, we have four kernel extensions. And we're just going to want to go, want to go ahead and highlight them all. And drag them onto the extensions folder. Select apply to all and select replace. All right, we are almost done. Now what you're gonna wanna do is go back to um, library. Make sure you're in the root of the drive. It's not system library, just library in the root of the drive. Go to library, look for preferences, scroll down to system configuration, and go ahead and drag this file on here. Select authenticate, replace, and type your password as I just did and yeah. and that is the last thing we need to do to get the installation ready to boot so I'm just going to go ahead and close everything and eject all these drives and I'll go ahead and resume the video and show you that it boots so I'll be right back all right, so I have my MacBook Pro here with the uh, external drive I've just created plugged into it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and power it up. I'm gonna hold down the option key. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the USB drive.
Now it will take quite some time to boot, so I will resume the video once it is just about booted. So I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see it has just finished booting, and now I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And as you can see, we are now in Lion. So I'm going to go ahead and eject the two internal drives so it doesn't try to index them. For the two internal partitions, it's one drive of course. Um, let's go ahead into Activity Monitor. Now I'm not exactly sure what this report crash process is, but for some reason it seems to take a lot of CPU power. I'm not exactly sure. I might have accidentally used the wrong kernel in the... Because uh, I did try quite a few kernels to try to get it to update to a new, newer version of OS X, but unfortunately I was unsuccessful. But um, it is um, making the CPU get hot, as you can see, or as you can hear, the fans are ramping up. But for the most part, it seems to run pretty well. So let me go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi real quick. Let's go ahead and to about this Mac. Alright, so as you can see here in the uh, system profiler window, it detects it as a 2.16 GHz Intel Core Solo. Now this is of course a Core Duo, but for some reason this kernel detects it as a Core Solo. Both CPU cores are being used. However, um, it sees the 2 gigabytes of RAM, the ATI Radon X 1600, and yeah, it is all working perfectly. So um, let's go ahead into software here. You can see that it is um, using Darwin version 11.3.0, um, and 64-bit kernel extensions is set to no. So. It is booting in purely 32-bit mode. As you can see, the system runs pretty well for being unsupported online. So um, as you can see here, all of the processes don't say 64-bit by them, so it's all running in 32-bit mode. So yeah, that is Lion and how to install it on a Core Duo or Core Solo Mac. I'm just going to go ahead and shut it down now. And yeah, that is how to install Lion version 10.7.2. Unfortunately, nothing newer than that on a Core Duo or Core Solo Mac. Hope you enjoyed this video. Alright, just a quick update. Um, I fixed the problem with the uh, report crash process taking up a ton of CPU usage. That was actually due to the process, um, some, I forget what it was called. I used this fix to get it working. I'll show you that now. The XPC helper process was constantly crashing and basically what Crash Reporter does is it tries to recover the process and it kept crashing and then relaunching and crashing so it was taking up a lot of CPU usage and the as you can hear there is quite a bit of um, uh, fan noise now that is just because Spotlight is indexing as you can see so yeah I fixed that and now it seems to run quite well so to fix that, I just followed this um, tutorial right here, basically from there to there, and that got the uh, report crash or, uh, process to stop taking up a ton of CPU usage. So I'll put a link to this web page in the description of this video, and if you're having that problem, you can go ahead and run 
ever follow this little tutorial and fix it. So, yeah, that is Lion 1072 fully working. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video.